the common theme is just sadness. Like, where where are we going with Korean football? We're developing some of the most exciting young talent that we've seen in generations. I look inside this organization, the names that are there, there's no leaders. Hmm. There, It's mostly actually comprised of old men who are just trying to get personal gain from this. Right. And it's really, really sad to see. Guys, welcome back to the channel. It's your boy John. Today we're going to be talking about the absolute chaos and the state of South Korean football. And who better than to join me and and really share with you guys the proper insight of what is actually happening? Because if I'm sitting here and you guys hear me waffling and yapping, it's going to start getting heated, and I'm going to get demonetized, and then I'm going to get sad, and I'm going to start singing ballads. Anyways, we're here and we're joined by the incredibly talented and absolutely handsome young man, and Mr. Jason of the Bibin Ballers. Jason, talk to me. What's going on, my man? John, you're always way, way too nice. I mean, I always <laughs> miss that infectious personality of yours. I, it's something that I'm always jealous of, man. Oh. Um, I'm doing well. Um, just an apologies in advance to your viewers. Um, I'm currently in Turkey right now on a medical exchange. I don't have my usual setup. So if the mic, if the camera's a little bit low quality, um, I ask for your forgiveness. Maybe you might even hear some kids running around in the neighborhoods or the imam singing the, the ezan. So um, you, hopefully you'll get the full turkey experience. But I am very, very excited to be here. Unfortunately, I feel like, you know, we have these, John, whenever Korean football is in a crisis, which is a bit unfortunate, but uh, I'll share as much as I can. I've been following as well and i um, excited to get right into it. You don't got to apologize for nothing. You look great. You sound great. Uh, the, the reason I realized that this was actually turning into a proper chaos was because the entire South Korean football community that that, uh, that I follow, everybody seems, seems to have a different sort of take. I mean, I think the general consensus is that uh, people are pretty upset and, and and disappointed but they seem to have a different angle at approaching and i'm very curious and, and and intrigued just to hear what you what you have to say in that regard but let's let's actually start uh post uh firing of jurgen klinsman obviously if you guys don't really know what what happened there you guys can check out our previous episode and of course the uh, the bb Muller's uh, youtube channel i'll leave the link for that in the description they have a fantastic uh, analysis on everything that's been going on uh, so if you guys are interested in that you can go check it out to sort of you know get up to speed and whatnot but post jürgen klinsman obviously south korea were in a position where they needed to find a new manager but it seemed in the beginning that they weren't really rushing to to find a replacement uh just i guess maybe jason if you could pick up from there and talk to us about that yeah so i mean the problem within the the kfa job Ever since um, Hong Myung-bo, who is actually coincidentally the, the current national team manager, uh, but previously he was the CEO of the KFA. And uh, Hong Myung-bo was the one who hired Kim Pan-gon, who is the ex-technical director of the KFA. And in that era, everything was very systematic. It was very organized. It was logical. And it really made sense. You know, firstly, they set a football philosophy in terms of how they wanted Korea to play. And then they selected candidates, interviewed them, and then made the selection based on the, the predetermined criteria that they never wavered from. And that led to Paolo Bentu, who was incredibly successful. Uh, for the first time, you know, we saw Korea really play proactive football in the world's biggest stage. We were controlling games. We had a lot of possession. We proactively created those chances. And it was because Hong myung -bo and Kim pang set this model and never wavered from it. Unfortunately, those two left the KFA and it led to a state where Chung bong gyu the, the president of the KFA, could do basically whatever he he wanted. He hired Jurgen Klinsmann, who should never, ever, ever have been the manager of Korea after his failures in Germany uh, with the U.S. men's national team. Klinsmann doesn't have a football philosophy. He's just a happy guy. He's he's, he's a celebrity. He's not a football manager. And um, after he was reluctantly fired by Chung Mong-gyu, um, Chung Mong-gyu um, put a Korean technical director in charge of the search for the Korean uh, national team's next manager. And that man was Chung Hae-sung. It took a little bit of time for him to set up his own committee 
because everyone in the previous committee was let go. And from then on, it was, you know, kind of chaotic. I heard based on, you know, sources that I have, and then also based on what um, Pak Chuho, one of the, the members of the technical committee um, said in his famous YouTube video that's gone viral in Korea. Right. Up until the point where we interviewed Jesse Marsh. So... I think the the story, there's two parts to the story. Up until Jesse Marsh um, is hiring failed, and then after that. So up until Jesse Marsh was negotiated as a candidate, everything was running actually surprisingly smoothly. The mm. candidates that um, the KFA selected for negotiations were Jesse Marsh, Jesus Casas. He was the um, ex assistant coach for Luis Enrique and the current uh, national team manager for Iraq. Uh, Senyol Gunesh, who was the former manager of Turkey and Besiktas, and also um, Bruno Lodge, who was the ex-manager of Wolves. These were the, the candidates that they were negotiating. And honestly, everyone in the technical committee were behind um, appointing Jesse Marsh. But for whatever reason, those negotiations failed. Some rumors have it was that the KFA didn't have enough money to appoint Jesse Marsh. The KFA made a big, big stink about Jesse Marsh not willing to live in Korea for, for a long period of time. But no matter the reason, those negotiations failed. Mm. And then everything went into chaos, into mayhem. There was no longer any structure, no longer any criteria that the, the KFA technical committee were following in terms of appointing this next manager. And a lot of the say, a lot of the direction that was set by Chong Ezong, the leader, was we want a domestic manager. We want a manager that we can control, that we are familiar with, that can uh, restore hierarchy in the KFA setup. Mm. And despite really good foreign options being suggested by Pak Juho, unfortunately, the, the most of the technical committee favored this domestic manager. And um, that's why we are here today. And Hong Myung-bo was selected as the man next manager of the Korean national team without an interview process. He didn't even get interviewed. Actually, he was the one that asked the technical director, why do you guys even want me? What was the reason behind the selection? And so it's it's a mess. And right now, actually, even there's government intervention. I think it's the Ministry of Culture, Travel, and Sports. They formally announced that they will be investigating the KFA for incompetence and for, you know, just really this terrible selection criteria of the manager. So it's really a, a sad spiral of events for our national team, John. It's, it's, a, it's a sad thing to witness as a Korean football fan. Absolutely. I, I, like, as you were speaking, there are a couple of thoughts ran into my head. Uh, I remember, maybe, correct me if I'm not mistaken, but didn't Hong myung get offered this and initially rejected? because of his situation with uh, now his former club, uh, his former uh, club that he was uh, uh, managing, uh, Ulsan Hyundai? Uh, that's absolutely right, Sean. So, uh, we have, there's so many layers. To this. Like, I right. could speak about this, uh, this situation for literally hours and hours and hours. Mm. But you're right. At the beginning of the process, Hong Meng Bo was a candidate alongside those four names that I um, listed uh, that was led by Jesse Marsh. Um, at the time, Hong Meng Bo was the coach of Ulsan Hyundai and he was preparing for a new K-League season. Mm. The fans, the K-League fans, the Ulsan fans went crazy. Like, what are you guys thinking? The K-League is not some sort of puppet or some sort of organization where the KFA can conveniently poach managers um, in order to save your crisis. Like, we have a season to, prevent, to prepare for. Ulsan actually qualified for the FIFA World uh, Club World Cup in 2025. Right. They're in a really exciting situation right now. They're like, what the heck are you guys thinking? Mm. And Hong Boyle said, yeah, like, I'm currently the head coach of Ulsan Hyundai Football Club. I have no intention of going back to the KFA. So please, please, please disregard me as one of the candidates. And for a while, he was disregarded. He was, you know, I mean, there are whispers here and there that he was still in contention, but they were focused on foreign candidates. But right. after all those foreign candidates were either either rejected the KFA or the KFA thought that they weren't good enough, then basically the only option that was left was Hong Myung-bo. And Hong, they, basically the technical director waited outside Hong Myung-bo's house for two, three hours just to speak <laughs> to this man, begged him to come back and be the manager of the Korean national team. And um, he eventually um, succumbed to the 
I mean, it is a very tantalizing, a very good job, John. We have to we have to admit that. Like, of course, being the manager of the Korean national team with this golden generation of players, that's tempting. And Hong Myung Bo could not resist the temptation. Uh, he succumbed to the pressure, and um, the, the Ulsan fans and the Kaylee fans are rightly pissed off right now. Like, what are they thinking? What are they doing? Like, are they shooting a music video for Maroon 5? Like, what is he waiting outside? It's like, I don't mind standing here right there, <laughs> out in the corner in your park, like throwing rocks at his window. Like, what are they doing? You know what I mean? Like, just the idea of this chaos from the top level of South Korean football, like in terms of the organization, it screams dysfunction. It screams uh, lack in organization. It just screams turmoil. And and as a South Korean fan, you know, watching from the outside in here in America, it's very disappointing. Disappointing to a fact that you know you mentioned the Park Chuo video that obviously went viral and went crazy. But now you're actually seeing a lot more of the former pros, the the, the especially from the 2002 World Cup squad, like the likes of my guy Park Ji Sung. Uh, we also heard um, Kuja Chor obviously not in 2002, but Kuja Chor also coming out to speak against this situation, like. What do you think these pros are actually like? What are these former players thinking at this moment in time? Because they're clearly criticizing them, but also uh, understanding the fact that criticizing the KFA might not be so, I guess, uh, beneficial in their in their in their favor. Yeah, that's a really good point, John. And uh, you're right. Park Chuo's video opened the floodgates after yeah. Park Chuo basically exposed the KFA for their incompetencies. Stars like Park Ji Sung, Yong Pyo was a big one. Ku Jia Chol, Lee Dong Guk. Etc. Etc. They all posted, and the common theme is just sadness. Like, where where are we going with Korean football? We're developing some of the most exciting young talent that we've seen in, in generations. We're, we have Lee Kang Yin, we have Pejinol, we have Son Heung Min, Kim Min Jae, Hwang Hee Chan. The list just goes on and on and on. It's the best right. group of talent that we've had in a long time. But exactly. because of the incompetence, dare I say corruption, of the Korean Football Association, there is no leader within that organization, John. Chung mong Yu is the president. But whenever something like this happens, he hides. When is the last time we heard from Chung mong Yu? The one that I can remember is when he apologized for the appointment of Klinsman after he was sacked. That is the last time I think we heard of him. Where is the apology, you know, for prolonging this managerial search, failing to get target after target after target, only to go back to beg to Hong Myung Bo to, to manage the, the Korean national team? When, when I said, John, earlier in this video that mm. there is a moment, a brief, brief moment in time where the care fate were functional, when Hong Myung Bo was the CEO and Kim Pan Gon was the technical director. Right. The reason behind that was because Hong Myung-bo could was the only person in the KFA who could who could say no to Chung Mong Yu, who could say, "Hey, listen, you're a businessman. You don't know football. Just so, just step aside for a bit. Let me handle everything related to football. Let me hire my guys. Let me do my job." And because Hong Myung-bo is such a legend in Korean football, he led the 2002 team to that semifinal run. He is widely regarded as one of the best defenders of all time in Asia. Because of that respect that his name carries, Chong Myung-gu was able to say, okay, sure, you do your thing. Right. But when that, you know, that source of control, that source of leadership left the KFA, there's no, who's, who's going to lead this organization, John? I look inside this organization, the names that are there, there's no leaders. Hmm. There, It's mostly actually comprised of old men who are just trying to get personal gain from this right. and it's really really sad to see because yeah, I, I don't think that there's no leaders in the cafe because mm -hmm. there's a lack of talent or a lack of young people who are excited and energized to lead this organization i don't right. think it's, it's that i think it's genuinely because these old people are unwilling to let go of the power that they've accrued so far in their lives that they want they want the influence. It's it's mm. it's the, the greed is 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 astonishing, John. Right. And so it's it's unfortunate that that is what is leading to the downfall of Korean football. Yeah, exactly. I mean, if if Albert was here and we started talking about nepotism in Korea, he would already be on like Super Saiyan three, just going off. And it would have been like one o'clock in the morning. He wouldn't have <laughs> given a damn. He would have just kept going. But um, 
Maybe just in case, I think we want to step back a little bit. Maybe uh, just in case if for people who are watching who might not know what actually happened with the Pak Chua situation. Can you kind of like summarize what went down and, and, and sort of what he, I guess, addressed in his viral video? Because because I think Pak Chua, like you said, it, that was the catalyst. It really started opening the floodgates for a lot of the, uh, the former players to really come out and, you know, have their say. But... Um, there's there's obvious situations right now, implications about the KFA now at this point talking about you know potentially taking legal action. Uh, there's the mm -hmm. KFA now calling YouTubers, telling them to chill out. Like we got to talk about all that stuff, but maybe just maybe we can start with the whole Pak Chua situation first. Yeah. So let's let me talk about firstly who Pak Chua is the person. Mm -hmm. I mean, like his football career. He's a very very talented player with you know a really impressive career that he's had. Right. Um, he's played for big clubs like FC Basel, Mainz, uh, Borussia Dortmund, Dortmund with Thomas Tuchel. Um, the, 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 the experience and the network that he's been able to build is really impressive. And that was why he was asked to join this committee to select the next manager of the Korean national team. And basically, Puck, the, the setting is, John, Pak Chul was recording this video. He was like... Oh, it's, it was supposed to be, you know, a really friendly, positive video, optimistic. This is currently how the Korean managerial search is going on, guys. Um, hopefully, within the next few weeks, we can wrap up the hiring of a foreign manager. But funnily enough, during the recording of that video, news dropped that Hong Myung-bo was, was going to be selected as the next manager of the Korean national team. But Pak Chul who was in the committee to select the manager, did not know until it was leaked to the press. So basically, he got pissed. He was, he was shocked. He was pissed. He's like, I've worked five months. I've dedicated five months of my life for, for Korea to select the next manager. And I'm not even going to, I don't even get the courtesy of, you know, a message or a phone call to say, hey, this is the guy that we selected. So from then on, he basically went on to expose the incompetencies of, you know, the managerial selection process. He first explained that the names he recommended to the KFA, um, he recommended Ruben Amorim, not as a serious candidate, but Ruben Amorim as an example of a young manager who is relatively unknown at the time, who has the potential to explode. And that's what the KFA should also consider um, for their next manager. He also was the one who suggested Jesse Marsh. And funnily enough, and this sh exposes their incompetency, none, none, maybe one, maybe two of the KFA tactical committee knew who Jesse Marsh was. That's shocking to me. I mean, this is a guy who's managed Red Bull Leipzig. He's a guy who managed Huang Hee Chan. He's a guy who managed Leeds in the Premier League. You are tasked with selecting the next manager of the Korean national team, and you do not know who Jesse Marsh is, I think there's a problem there. But to continue, uh, he's, he's, he suggested Jesse Marsh. He suggested uh, Vasco Siabra, who's a really young, exciting uh, manager upcoming in the Portuguese league. And he also um, went on to suggest Thomas Tuchel's uh, assistant coach and some of their associated coaching staff. I mean, the names, the quality of the names that Pak Chua who were suggesting were really, really exciting. And you could see that he really loved about Korean football. He reached out to every single European connection that he, that he had just to say, hey, guys, we're in trouble. Can you do me a favor? Do you have any managerial candidates that we can consider? But he said there was a feeling that whenever he suggested a European manager, the Korean technical committee attacked him. They were like, oh, we don't like this about this guy. Oh, this guy's too young. Oh, this guy's never managed, a, you know, an, an international team. But then if it was Hwang son if it was Kim do if it was Hong myung they were like, oh, yeah, 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 this guy's the one. I think this guy would be perfect for a national team. He's so familiar with Korean football. All the players would respect him. I mean, come on, he, he won He went to the semifinals in 2002. Like, this is our guy. Like, that was the level of incompetence of this technical committee. And one guy had the balls to say, hey, Pak Jewel, you've never managed before, man. You're young. You don't know what you're talking about. Like, the theory behind football and the actual, you know, managing, it's, it's totally different. 
And Park Ji was like, I- excuse me? Like, I've, I've been managed by some world-class managers in my career. Mm. Like Thomas Tuchel, Paolo Bento, et cetera, et cetera. Like, I think I know what I'm talking about. Right. So basically, it, he, it, was, it was a story of Pak Jewel suggesting really interesting names. The KFA saying, yeah, I think we'll go for the domestic candidate. And him getting undermined time and time and time again. Yeah, I mean, I like we don't even need to be in that committee room to probably uh, to understand what probably went down. Like, I'm pretty sure some of them farts were like, "Huh, che she she che she huh ma Like, it would have been like you mentioned it. How is it that they they're in the footballing world and they just don't understand the simplest of things as to what they're missing, what they're lacking? It is shocking, but. I'm pretty certain that when it all boils down to it, there is a level of nepotism and there is a level of incompetency that's all, I guess, blended into this this overall chaos, you know. And it is really, really sad to see. Um, but I, 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 with respect to the situation now, right? What do you think is going to happen with respect to the the team in general, right? Obviously, the KFA is the KFA, but the players now are going to be looking at this, thinking, oh. Uh, Hong Young, uh, Hong Youngbo is the manager again, and Hong Youngbo is—he's not known to be some soft guy. Like this guy is, this guy is a hard brother. You know what I'm saying? Like he, like I've seen him like tell people like, "You better not get smile before we, you know, score goals." Some I was like, "Damn, dog!" Like I'm trying to trying to play some soccer, you out tell him not to smile. Like he's a hard man. Do you think it was the right call, irrespective of like all of the the chaos? Do you think he can get the job done? Because clearly, like you said, um, you know, we're in a very, I guess, um fruitful moment in the South Korean uh, football scene and, and the World Cup is coming up in two years. Do you think this he can at least do something for South Korea at this moment? I, I actually think he can, John. Like, mm. for me, I kind of like the appointment in, in terms of he he's not a... So, my perception of Hong Boy is he's a good man manager. Mm. He's able to control the locker room. He's able to properly inspire his players. And yes, there is that, I hate the word, but there is the aura that he carries, yeah, especially yeah. in Korean football. A lot of these guys are are familiar with the 2002 World Cup, the players that we have. They will respect him. They will admire him. And the charisma, the leadership that he brings, it's unquestionable. It, it's, it's, it's very, very good. What I'm concerned about is the tactical side of the game. Mm. He's his football with Wilson Hyundai was was okay at best. Um, very, very basic 4 2 3 1. One of the central defensive midfielders drops in between the two center backs when they build up, and then the wing backs push up very, very wide. But it's a very basic um, style of football that I don't know is it going to inspire the European based players that have played really exciting football? For example, um, Son Min under Ange Postacoglu, Lee Gang In under Luis Enrique, even Kim Min Jae under Thomas Tuchel to an extent. These right. are guys that are playing under world class managers. And if they go back to Hong Myung Bo's basic 4 2 3 1 in, in defensive shape, it's going to be a 4 4 2 low block, blah, blah, blah. Like, is this going to be good for, for the stars that we have? Like, are they, be, or are they going to be content with that? Because we have to realize that when Paolo Bentu left the national team, mm. a group, a leadership group of the Korean national team went to the KFA and said, we loved Paolo Bentu. And ideally, the next manager would be someone who is able to build on the foundation that he's built. Right. Who is able to build on the proactive style of football that he's taught us. Building out from the back. Creating our own chances. Um, I mean... I'm not a football expert, so I can't explain it in terms of technical, you know, terms or whatever. Hmm. But you get the general gist, right? Like they wanted a guy who knew what he was talking about. And is Hong Myung Bo that guy in terms of a tactical perspective? I would say no, he is not. Hmm. The only perhaps um, hope that we can that we can look to, John, is that Hong Myung Bo recently made a trip to Portugal and Spain to interview foreign assistant coaches who could supplement his um, tactical side of the game. He actually, that was a, that was a criteria that he listed to the KFA. If 
if you are going to hire me, I want to bring two foreign coaches into the fold. One who can help me with fitness and one who can help me with the tactical side of the game. So it, I think it's very um, encouraging that he knows his limitations. Um, and hopefully he's able to go to the Portugal and Spain and really hire a young, young but experienced guy who, who's able to build on the foundations that Palo Mento built. And um, just to go back, sorry, John, to wrap up that Pak Chuo story, mm. um, the KFA after Pak Chuo released his video, they were like, we're taking legal action. Like, that's totally unacceptable. And then a week later, they're like, actually, never mind. We're, we're not going to take legal action. And um, like I said in the beginning of the video, the, the Korean government is now involved, you know, and they're going to take a look at the this this managerial search process from the very beginning to see if there was, you know, nepotism, if there was corruption, if there was incompetence. And I don't even know if Hoon was going to stay on as the manager if they'd find something really bad. Like, I don't know the degree of um, intervention that they can, that the government can take, mm. but um, everything's up in the air right now. Vibes are at an all time low. So yeah. I'm worried about, about our national team. Absolutely. Vibes are absolutely at a long time low. And, you know, as somebody who tries to be as relatively optimistic and realistic as possible at this moment in time, it's very hard to find that optimism. I think it is relatively bleak. And even if there is a government intervention, like you said, to what degree of varying truths we find that the severity of these truths, even if they do go in there and just start cleaning house, whatever the situation is, uh, you know, it's going to. It's going to cause some level of, I guess, more added chaos, irrespective of, you know, what actually unfolds. But um, my concern with respect to Hong Myung-bo, and this is just my personal opinion, is that uh, Hong Myung-bo reminds me of, like, my dad and my uncle. He's got, like, this, like, old school energy. You know what I mean? Like, I've seen Albert tweet, like, like his potential, like, he's got that quote-unquote Gonde vibe. And, like, mm -hmm. you know, he's got that, he's got that, you know, that, mm, you know what I mean? Like, that, that mm -hmm. Tojong energy, you know what I'm saying? That, that, mm. I'm not saying that's necessarily a bad thing. You know, I think maybe, you know, depending on the squad and the players that you have, that might maybe potentially be, I guess, more familiar to some of the players. But from from my perspective, like you mentioned, there's there's a, there's a lot of Korean footballers now who are playing at a higher level of football and that, that whether you agree with me or not, at the end of the day, that's outside of South Korea and that's within the realms, especially in Europe. So if these players are accustomed and, and 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 i guess quote unquote raised in these european settings not just from a football perspective but also in the culture side of things you know in the the um, tradition the the people that they hang out with communication all these things um, to to train with the, to to be with that kind of environment and just come back and to readjust to what i've potentially am worried could be a, a an aggressive i guess the korean side of things uh, we saw Kim Min Jae. Like he's not somebody that's like shy. Like a man's gonna chat if he's if he wants to say something, he's gonna say something. You know what I mean? And like, and I'm not saying every footballer should go out there and say whatever the hell he wants to say, but there is that element of like you know, it ain't the old school '90s of Korea. It ain't the 2002 squad. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, so uh, like, I have a bit of that concern. And and you mentioned that you know Hong Min Bo is gonna go out there and he's gonna find you know two uh, foreign coaches. I guess that is a silver lining to this. Um, but I am concerned. I, I still am very concerned if he does stay on. Yeah, I, I think those are very, very valid concerns uh, mm. for the reasons you mentioned. Um, just to play devil's advocate, though, we saw under Jurgen Klinsmann what a a lax coach, uh, for lack of a better term, could right. bring. Absolutely. They It brought ping pong gate, where Lee Gang -in and Sun Min, two of our biggest stars, were swept in, in the scandal of the, the decade. Um, where there was so much disharmony within the team that the, the players could not perform um, against Jordan, taking away the tactical incompetence of Jurgen Klinsmann. Right. Um, you definitely won't see that with Hong mm. Um, But I think there are very valid concerns. You're right, John. Is it almost too much? Are we going from zero to 100 mm. very, very quickly? Could we not have found a middle ground in Jesse Marsh? Like... Some of the, the, the points that the KFA brought up when they said, Humimbo, this is why Humimbo is the best guy to lead our national team. They were kind of nonsensical to me. They were like, Humimbo would be the best person to inspire our players to maintain um, respect within the national team setup and to make sure that the players, that the team chemistry is at an all time high. And I don't disagree with what they said, but. For example, like a Jesse Marsh, we've seen Jesse Marsh's team talks. For example, the one at Anfield 
where he rallied his Red Bull Salzburg players mm. um, at halftime to that incredible second half performance. We the Korean fans know that as well because Huang Yichan was on that team. Mm. We saw it at Copa America when he was able to, in, in the span of what, two, three months, unite this Canadian team and make a charge to the semifinals of Copa America, playing really good football against the likes of Argentina. I mean, a domestic coach doesn't have to be the one to build team chemistry and maintain order. Right. Like under Palo Bento, there was amazing team chemistry. There Absolutely. was no problems within the Korean national team set. Mm. It doesn't have to be a domestic manager. Foreign managers can do that as well. So, I mean, while I agree that those are humble strengths, I think those strengths can also be found in foreign national team managers. So spot on. Absolutely. All right. Well, I think we're pretty much wrapping up uh, to this point, but I guess, uh, I guess the last few things I'd maybe ask you, Jason, like uh, overall, how do you feel about the state? I know, I know it's pretty bleak and all that, but do you have any shred of optimism? Do you feel anything? Do you feel excited? Talk to me a little bit about that. I'm worried. I'm really, really worried. Well, uh, while I said that, I think Humimbo is not a bad option for for this Korean national team. Mm. Really, the success, if you look at Korean football history, many, many times, success comes when the national team has some level of support and positive energy behind it. Mm. And we're in a situation where there is so much toxicity within this fan base, so much skepticism. I mean, I think if you did a poll in Korea, like 90%, nine, maybe 95% of Korean football fans absolutely hate Hong Min-bo right now and blame him. Like, you told us a month ago that you were not leaving Ulsan Hyundai and right. suddenly you change your mind. Like, you left your club that you were with for, like, what, three years overnight. Like you left them without a manager, you're in the title race. Like that, yeah. what does that speak of your character? Exactly. And so when there's no support, in fact, when there's so much negative energy towards this team, even if Kumimbo is a good, competent manager, he's not he's not gonna be allowed any mistakes. Like, let's say we go out there in qualification and for some unlucky reason we time Bahrain one one. Mm. People are gonna people are gonna have their pitchforks out. Yeah. Like, let's fire him. Like, this is the guy you chose after five months. It's unfortunate because the KFA could have created a situation where Humilbo would be a supported and celebrated manager. Maybe after 2026, he's given the keys to the national team and he's allowed to build the team for the 2030 World Cup. Or maybe at the very beginning of the managerial search process, the KFA admits, hey guys, we really want a domestic manager, that they're transparent. You know, we want our domestic manager. We know that this may be not the direction that you guys want, but we take the full blame for it. Please support the manager that we choose. And they hire Hong Mingbo. Then at least, you know, there's some level of, you know, respect for the Korean fans, at least they get some sort of transparency and they feel like they're part of the process, but they qu quite literally created the worst possible start for any manager, I think, in the history of Korean football. Like, I don't think there's any chance of success because of the negative energy and pessimism surrounding this team. So one word to describe my feelings would be, would be terrifying. Like, I, I don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> hey look jason next time we come on next time you come on here we're going to talk about something else we're going to talk about you know our shared love of antiquing we're going to talk about hockey we're going to talk about turkey we're going to talk about all these other incredible things and not anything having to do with south korean football but hey jason thank you so much for uh tuning in my man appreciate you for checking in and, and sharing your insight with us uh is there anything you'd like to plug no, just uh, thank you so much for having me, John. I mean, it is always, you know, an honor and privilege to to share the recording room with you. Um, I think, you know, you're you're headed right to the top and it's just a joy <laughs> to be able to watch from the sidelines. So nothing to plug, just a, just a, a shout out for my man, John. And uh, thanks again for having me. Damn, Jason, you got you got me in the fields. I look at you, I'm like, damn, why, why can't I be like Jason? And you're telling me I'm going to the top. <laughs> I'm set.
I'm set. You know what, South Korea, you might as well call me. I'll take the job. You know what I mean? <laughs> but, you know, for Jason and, of course, for Albert, who couldn't make, uh, who couldn't uh, be with us today, uh, I'm, I'm going to plug the channel one more time. It's Bibin Ballers. They are phenomenal, especially for a lot of uh, Korean-American fans and, and fans outside of Korea who are interested in South Korean football in particular. Uh, you guys can go check out the Bibin Ballers YouTube channel. The page, the link is in the description below. I'll leave that for you guys. Of course, they're so they're so fun. And they they they, they, they chat right. You know what I mean? I really love sitting and just listening in. You know, sometimes I, I think the last one that Albert had with uh, uh, our good friend Michael Welsh, I was like, I was like doing dishes or something, and I just left it on, and then I stopped doing the dishes, and I just sat there listening to him. Like it's, it's actually really good insight. And and if you guys are South Korean football fans, I highly recommend you guys go check them out. But thank you guys so much for tuning in. Appreciate every single one of you guys. Get in the comments below. Let us know what do you feel about the state of South Korean football. Do you feel like Hong Bo is the right man for the job? Do you think, like Jason said, you think he'll even be? at the job here in a couple of weeks or months uh, after the, the government investigation. What do you guys think? Get in the comments. Let us know. Like the video. Thank you so much. Subscribe. If you're not, you know, it's free. And hit the like. Maybe that's free too. That's it from us for today. Thank you so much. Take care.